Hello and welcome to the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts Art Break at Home. Um, today is January 11th, 2022. It's our first art break of 2022 and we are thrilled that you have chosen to join us today or perhaps in the future um, if you're watching this later. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, today we are going to be joined by two very special artists, Bebe and Lele Chin. Um, and they will do a presentation and we will take questions at the end. So um, whatever you're on, if it's Facebook or YouTube, you can type a, que a question or a comment or a thought into the comment box and we will see it. And we will, um, we will look at those questions at the end. So please allow me to introduce our special guest today. Lele Chin and Bei Bei Chin are twin sisters from China and they have worked collaboratively together in creating paintings and ceramics. They received their graduate degrees from the top ranking universities in China. And within their fields of expertise, they taught both undergraduate and graduate students at Liaoning University of Technology in China. Now Lele is teaching at Grand Valley State University and they are both the principals of the Academy of Art and Design in Grand Rapids. Lele and Bebe have exhibited their works nationally and internationally. They won Art Prize Special Recognition in 2009, the Ward H. and Cora E. Ney Director's Purchase Prize and Southwest Michigan Printmakers Excellence in Printmaking Award in 2008 during the West Michigan Area Show, um, the West Michigan Area, or sorry, the West Michigan Art Competition 2018 Honorable Mention, Outstanding Work Award in 2018 her version Contemporary Art Exhibition in China, Excellent Work Award in Contemporary Drawing Art Exhibition 2019, the 2017 MFA Graduate Award of Ferris State University, and the first place of the 2010-2009 National Teacher Competition of Art in China. Being Chinese artists residing and studying in the United States, their work is heavily influenced by Chinese culture, aesthetics and philosophy. They have always been interested in engaging with environmental and cultural issues through ceramics and painting. Their work, Gaia One, which received the Ward H and Cora E. Ney Director's Purchase Prize, as well as the Southwest Michigan Printmakers Excellence in Printmaking Award during the 2008 West Michigan Area Show, is currently on view at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts in Vistas, Visions of China, Japan, and Korea. Vistas closes on February 6th, so I hope that if you are in the Kalamazoo area that you will come and see their amazing artwork um, while it is up on the walls and particularly after you have watched this uh, presentation so that you can um, know more about it from the artist's perspective. So I'm going to add Bebe and Lele to our stream. And please join me in welcoming our amazing guest artists today, Bebe and Lele. Hello. Hello. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited. Uh, thank you for being virtual with us today. And um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to y'all. But again, to our audience members at home, please remember that you can type a question or a comment or a thought into the comment box of whatever stream you're on and we will address it at the end during the Q&A session. So without, um, take it away. Thanks so much. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Lele. I'm Bebe. Uh, we are twin sister. Mm, we are from China. So can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, we can see your PowerPoint. Okay, great. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So 
I'm going to show some photos. Yeah, Lady and I. Um, we always work together. Yeah. So um, I, I, I'm going to talk a little little bit about uh, um, ourselves. Ourself. So okay. Okay. our work is heavily influenced by Chinese culture, aesthetics, uh, and philosophy. Yeah. Um, we're always interested in addressing environmental and cultural issue through ceramics and painting. Um, we, are, um, we were born in a coastal city uh, in northeast China. So the picture so there is an amazing landscape in our hometown. I still remember um, not very far from the mainland. They, there was a small island called the Pinholder Hill. Yes. Um, when the tides fall, a natural cobblestone path appears. And it uh, connects the mainland to the small island. The path is called the bridge to heaven. And it appears twice a day. Um, an ancient man said the path was made by flying angel with a long ribbon. So you can see the photo. Uh, two flying angel sculpture were built close to the path. There are um, only three, only three this, like these pieces. Uh, yeah, like a, this uh, spectacle landscape in the world. One is in Korean, but that is artificial. And another, oh, uh, one's in French, that is uh, artificial. Another is in Korean, um, which is nature pass, but uh, appears once a year. We appreciate our carefree childhood and enjoyed the beauty of nature as a gift. We deeply believe that the world is full of wonder and miracle. A human is a part of nature. However, our hometown gradually changed when we returned after studying in Beijing, we found a huge pair and an oil refinery factory near the pass. We noticed that the air was not as clear as before. The polluted harbor was much closer to the small island. Perhaps in a few days, uh, in a few years, the pass will be gone altogether. Yeah, yeah, here a harbor really close to the nature path. After a few years, we moved, we moved back to Beijing where the air pollution was very serious. People called it air pollution in Beijing heat. So we created, uh, created this uh, serious uh, ceramic uh, masks, masks called the uh, H. Called the uh, H, yes. According to the, according to the um, Kabali Earth Organization, China's Air pollution has led to an average of over 4,000 deaths per day. In fact, 38% Chinese people breathe air that is unhealthy and have to wear masks sometimes. Um, we created this series, hate series, 
artwork in 2016. Unfortunately, this day, not only Chinese, but people all over the world need to wear masks uh, since the COVID-19. And usually people wear gas masks during war time. So in our artworks, we exaggerated the size of this everyday masks in order to warn people that uh, air pollution and the virus are not less dangerous than war. The land I we use traditional uh, Chinese blue and the clay color to paint the landscape on the ma uh, gas masks. The beauty of Chinese traditional and uh, ecological destruction of the real world from the distinct contracts, contrast which is displayed together in every pieces of ceramic artwork. We paint flowers, landscape, that's, uh, each pattern has their own meanings. So, yeah, here's bamboo. Bamboo is a very traditional painting. That's a meaning, uh, it means uh, people has an honest and um, very good human nature. Um, we have never started exploring the relationship between culture and the nature environmental. Uh, we painted this series um, of 12 watercolors through which we try to tell stories of life and death, science and art, religion and, the polit and politics we hope to create contemporary artworks by combining Eastern aesthetics and Western painting ideas. We use the figures, the figure of a flying angel in Chinese culture and the lung cancer cells that can be seen under the microscope to create this series contemporary artworks. The idea from Confucianism, Taoism, and the Buddhism. Those are three different Chinese religion and philosophy. Um, but, we, but they have the same core idea that uh, human beings are integral part of nature. Um, we are trying many new way to express our things, both uh, macro and uh, micro, to represent the pol pollution as a global issue. Cancer caused by pollution is not only inside our cells, but also a part of the earth. On a micro scale, Air pollution can be considered cancer in landscape. And on a micro scale, this disease is in the cells of our bodies. We hope that our work reflected both of these issues. We created the, the, this series in 2016. Now, that the virus existed in people's body. But for the life of the earth, human being is the most destructive virus.
um, for the painting technology, technologies we can buy Western watercolor skills and the Chinese traditional method. Um, they also use compositional white space, uh, or you call negative space. Negative space is an important aesthetic method in Chinese painting, letting the audience have an imagination. Uh, in, yeah, this blank composition that is not a void of uh, virtual perspective, but an enrichment of art artistic performance. Uh, in our uh, in our work, we paint some traditional Chinese pattern such as uh, dragons, flowers, uh, flying angel, and the Buddha hands. This image have many meanings. For example, Buddha hands can mean culture, religion. Yeah, mm, pattern patterns in our work become more abstract in the intersection of concepts and the symbol. We decided to use Buddha hands instead of completed figures to represent all human beings. Uh, I'm going to show uh, another series called the uh, Gaia series. Um, original Gaia series are oil and the acrylic paint on the on wood board. And this uh, this one you can see in point point. Um, that's a screen. That's a screen printing. Yeah, Lele and I we. Um, spend uh, six months to make uh, this screen printing. Um, that's uh, so challenging for us. Each piece uh, uh, over has over forty layers. Yeah, we 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 work every day. Spend uh, six months to finish it. Finish them. Okay, so um, Gaia series embodies the overconsumption of natural resources by human beings. And the painting are also in uh, also inspired by Chinese philosophies a key philosophies of Confucianism, Taoism, and the Buddhism. That a human is an integral part of nature. Thus, if we damage nature, we are damaging ourselves. The same idea from a um, British uh, named James Lovelock in 1972. His Gaia hypothesis is that living organisms interact with their um, inorganic surroundings on Earth to form a synergistic and self-regulating complex system that hopes to maintain and uh, perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. This will is exactly the same as the series that the moon is an integral part of nature. The first one, the, 
Yeah, the first painting is a forest. And the second, the second painting shows marine organisms. And the third one, uh, the, the subject in the birth painting, in, uh, in birth and the sky, in the blue, green blue sky. Yeah, so the yeah, three different things. And the figure in those paintings represent the Earth mother, uh, whose facial expression is sad and desperate. Human consumption of nature is damaging the balance of, of the life entity. Due to the lost balance, the skin of the body breaks apart. The earth mother is squeezing one his is squeezing one his bride. One is his breast to indicate that humans are not only fighting with nature, but also with themselves. Um, inside the body are animals and plants with the sample color showing is polluted and gloomy. In such a poisonous world, animals and plants are unhappy and uncomfortable. Their pain and their struggle on the edge of death. Of death. For the painting style, We are taking reference from the Asian Jun Huang Mongol cave mirror using the color palette and also uh, animal eye style from the Buddha figures in this mirror and also Buddha sculpture, yeah, the same eye style from Buddha sculpture. So each animal and the plants has uh, has a different meaning, such as uh, the first painting. Um, the first painting, you can see the Mother Earth's hair and inside the body, yeah, there are crescent mums. And the stems interview the inner parts of the figure and her hair is the petal. In ancient culture, this kind of flower, crescent mom, represented death and being reborn. So the intro. So as uh, as you know, our artworks are heavily influenced by Chinese culture, aesthetics, and philosophy, and we strongly believe that by our efforts. Art can provide a unique way to help people understand the true meaning of life. And art can explain to people how beauty and pleasure could be perfectly co coexisting. Existing. Um, as you know, we are living in a challenging and uh, exciting time. And the world is changing fast now. As an artist, Babe and I believe part of our mission is to encourage people to change our thinking and perceptions to understand and address this uh, complex, complex uh, global issue from inequality over pandemics to uh, climate, uh, climate changes. For many years, uh, we have been actively 
interested in environmental and cultural issues through ceramics and paintings. The environmental issues such as pollution were caused by human, our activities, and then human hurts nature by creating this environmental issue. We also hurt ourselves. We, uh, as artists, have no intention to uh, resolve this issue in uh, scientific, uh, scientific way. We have been using our artworks to remind people that we have such challenging existing in our lives and explain the detail of the nature of this challenging uh, and encourage people to find solutions for complicated uh, social challenges such as air pollution, greenhouse gas, and the coronavirus. So um, we hope uh, we can use art to point out this cruel fact by com combining the imaginary world by reality. We hope our work can bring strong attention to people. That this environmental issue have always been there and will always exist and it becomes more and more critical and dangerous if we do not realize this challenge and treat them seriously, carefully, and sincerely. Okay, um, so do, do you have some questions? Hello again, um, it's Jessica from the KIA. So, um, Bebe and Lele, you are ready for questions now? Yes. All right. So, everybody, if you have got a question, um, please do type it into the chat or the comment box, rather, and we will see it. Um, while we are waiting, I have a question about your gas mask haze series. Mm -hmm. um, did you freeform those gas masks or did you, like, make a mold to get the shape? Uh I yeah, I made uh, one mold, but uh, in not exactly copy. Uh, yeah, all shapes. So I have basic uh, uh, mold, and then the, for the details, each one has a uh, different details. So uh, we uh, create original mold, and then uh, also we uh, create uh, every one unique form. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and then if you would like to keep your screen shared, um, if somebody references a work or uh, that's totally fine, or if you would like to end your screen share um, and just take questions. Um, but we do have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stop share screen. Otherwise, we don't oh. know. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, somebody in our audience says, I'm curious about your working process. How do you start? Who does what? Do you both work in a studio at the same time, or does one just pick up from where it was started? Uh, we're always working together uh, at the same time in our studio. So, uh, you know, uh, most of people call us uh, she instead of uh, they. Uh, so, yeah, we're always working together, and um, so yeah, oh, so first, uh, mm -hmm. usually first we discussing uh, about what what kind of uh, topic we would like to do for next event, and we um, like do sketch together and discussing sometimes we yeah <laughs> yeah and critique each other. Mm -hmm. We always like a uh, uh, drugs on the same uh, canvas. So for example, if I uh, I draw the line, the baby uh, do the coloring, 
So yeah, yeah. For the painting, yeah. For the painting, we do that. Yeah, yeah and for the ceramics, that. we also yeah working together. Okay. And sometimes we um, we argue, discussing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and always working together. Great, thank you. So, um, so like with the malignant landscape watercolors, um, did you know? one of you would, would do a little bit here and then would you be doing that together? And then one of you would say, oh, what about we do this instead? Or what about we add this? Or um, would it just be, um, you had talked about it before you began and then worked collabor collaboratively during the process of? Yes, but yes. watercolor a little bit different. Watercolor you already, uh, we, we did a sketch first and maybe one person um, really very good at the uh, watercolor landscape. Yeah, yeah I do uh, the freehand part, mm -hmm. and uh, baby, uh, most of the time, yeah, she uh, she do the detail detail part. So, mm -hmm. thank you. And I think those malignant landscapes are so amazing. And there must have been an element of um, perhaps uh surprise too because it looks like there were parts where there was quite a lot of water used and maybe to allow the paint to spread out um so maybe a collaboration with the painting itself as well as with both of you mm -hmm. um we have another comment so much of the social and environmental challenges can be very overwhelming and lead people to despair how can your art also give hope Um, this, uh, uh, we just think about, uh, uh, because we are from China, so uh, Chinese we, we are so heavily influenced by Chinese culture. In Chinese culture, um, it's uh, not so desperate. Um, yeah, we, we just found the, the balance we can have the hope of the future. Yeah, just uh, don't um, overconsumption the the, the the natural resources. We just uh, keep what we need, um, what we need. So keep the. It's like a, uh, like I talk about talk about James Lovelock. Think about the earth is the one like one person. So think about uh, um, everyone like a human. Every human is a cell. Is a cell in this one person. So um, don't or consumption so maybe we we can find some balance yeah yeah so yeah actually we can not tell uh so uh who is bad who is uh good so uh maybe uh so we which our virus is a uh, bad for human but maybe human is a uh, another virus for uh whole environmental so human for the earth maybe human like a, a can, cancer cell mm -hmm. yeah uh, in the earth so um, that's a balance is very important so in our culture um, nature and human unit one uh, so uh, yeah we can using di different uh, perspective to think about uh, environmental issue uh, human, human first ourselves uh, human first environmental uh, yeah, just uh, for, uh, for ourselves. So. Great. And um, the person who had asked the question about how art can give hope also said, for example, Chinese American John D. Liu began ecosystem restoration camps to give us all hope to work towards something. So thank you for that comment. Thank you. Um, I had another question and now I'm um, struggling to remember what it was. So if you're watching us at home, um, please do type your comments and questions into your comment box. Um, so how did the both of you uh, start? Have you have you always been artists? Have you always known that you wanted to be artists and be art educators? Or did you learn that um, over time? Mm. We have our education uh, degree, uh, so we have been 
um, teaching almost uh, 20, 20 years. So, uh, yeah. It's a very old professor uh, in university in China. And then we moved to, uh, eight years ago, we moved to US. And we feel more free, you know, to express, uh, express our idea. Um, the lack of pollution issue, cultural issue. Um, in here, we have more freedom to, to do that, to express our idea. So um, from professor to full-time uh, artist, yeah. And in, in here, we, yeah, in China, we also paint some, but more um, traditional and uh, realistic painting. And when we, when, when we moved uh, in uh, United States, we felt more freedom to create contemporary art uh, into, yeah, thinking about it. And that's contemporary um, issue. So yeah. that's a lot of, uh, yeah, that's a big, big change for, for us from the uh, educator to contemporary artist. Yes. Um, a question from someone um, which ties a little bit in with my first question, but there's two, so I'm going to read them together. Would you please describe your art education and training from the time you were children? Did your childhood and youth influence the art you create today? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, I believe. Uh, our uh, grandparents, uh, both sides from um, mother, ma from mother side, from father side, grandparents, uh, they, uh, they are artists. Uh, we learn the Chinese calligraphy, uh, Chinese painting from them. So, um, yeah, so the te technique and the uh, conception we're always using uh, in our artworks right now. So, yeah, I think that very important for for us for uh, the yeah the uh, learning from uh, uh, childhood. And I know that you are both um, art educators. You have got your Academy of Art and Design in Grand Rapids. And um, Lele, I believe that you teach at Grand Valley State. Um, so do you teach a, um, a range of ages? Um, do you teach like children through college students? Yeah. Um, and, adult. what, yeah. and adults. Mm -hmm. So what kind of advice do you have for artists who are working um, just in general or artists who are learning, um, maybe they don't feel comfortable calling themselves artists yet, but they are interested in exploring these same kinds of ideas about um, about the environment and the times that we are living in today. Uh, I think, yeah, the creation, uh, creativity is a very important. So uh, I'm teaching uh, yeah, different uh, ages and different uh, background. Uh, of students, uh, but uh, um, a very important thing is uh, teach them how to uh, uh, creation. So creativity. Uh, so uh, no matter like digital creativity, like just a uh, fan art, traditional. Uh, uh, so I teach them how to uh, creativity and also through how through your art, even the uh like young children uh, so how through the art to explain your your life uh your yeah reality your thinking so that's a uh, the, the point yeah hope i answer your question yeah. you you mute you mute yourself Oops. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Um, I was just going to say that we're almost out of time. So I will do um, a last call to anybody who is watching us at home um, for any questions or comments or thoughts. Um, and I know that it can take a moment to type. So um, I'm just going to say that this has been so interesting. It has been so lovely to see your work. It's so interesting and to hear about the 
um, the you know kind of complex thought process that you have been putting into each work. Um, I think it's particularly interesting for audience members to get to hear firsthand from artists about um, the things that are symbols and what things mean um, behind an artwork. So we do have another comment. Um, and I'll just finish my thought, which was, I'm thinking specifically about Gaia One, which is on display at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. And to hear about the thought process and the philosophy that inspired it with the Gaia hypothesis, it's so um, insightful for your work. So um, we have a question. So somebody is watching this with their daughter and um, or their daughters. And it says, my daughters wonder what it is like to work with your sister. <laughs> Um, thank you. And then where can we see more of your wonderful artwork? Uh, yeah, uh, right now, yeah, we have an uh, exhibition as, uh, at uh, Kalamazoo Art Institute. So you can uh, come to the gallery and to see our artworks. And also uh, we have some uh, artworks that, uh, yes, yes. exhibited in our school. Academy and Art and Design, uh, yeah, at Twenty uh, Eighth Street, uh, So yeah, we have a uh, like personal gallery uh, in our school. So you are welcome to come, come to our school to yeah. take a look at our artworks and uh, uh, talk about with uh, our input in person. Thank you, and of course. Um, anyone who is watching, if you're in our area, you have got until February 6th to come and see Vista's Visions of China, Japan, and Korea, where their screen print, Gaia One, is on display. Um, and what was the name of the gallery again? You had said you have an exhibition at right now? Uh, not in fact, it's uh, uh, in our art school, Academy of Academy. Art and Design. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, uh, our own gallery. Yeah, in here, we exhibit our artworks in here. Great, and that is in Grand Rapids, correct? Yeah, in Grand Rapids, yeah, at uh, 28th Street. 28th Street in Grand Rapids, great. Um, well, do you have any final thoughts or um, ideas or comments that you would like to share with our audience members today? Yeah, I'm so happy to uh, yeah, attend this uh, talking, mm -hmm. talking event. So, yeah, I thank you, uh, audience, everyone to join us. So, uh, so uh, we would like to have more opportunity to yeah, make more connection. Let's go forward. Yes, and thank you so much for your time. Um, I know that both of you are very busy. So thank you so much for your time today um, to speak during today's art break. And someone in the comments uh, is saying thank you so much for sharing. Um, so it has been our pleasure today to be joined by Lele Chin and Bei Bei Chin, and of course, our entire wonderful audience. This um, is going to live on on our Facebook and YouTube videos. So. Um, if you in the audience thought this was so interesting and you would love it to have somebody you know watch it, you can send them to the videos and they will be able to watch it. Um, and um, we will return for another virtual art break on January 25th um, with Rufus Ferguson. He is a musician who is part of the Resonance Project. So you can hear his original musical compositions at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts in the Unveiling American Genius exhibition. And um, I know I've said it a few times, but I'm gonna say it again. Please, please, please do come and see Bebe and Lele's work, Gaia One, on display in um, Vista's Visions of China, Japan, and Korea. It is up until February 6th. So you have got a few weeks to come and see their amazing artwork. 
um, and and to um, look at it with the insight that they have provided for us today. So um, again, thank you so much for your time and um, that's all. We're going to have a wonderful rest of our Tuesdays. I hope and everybody stay safe and healthy um, and maybe, you know, be inspired by today's talk and go out and create something. So, goodbye, you. everybody. Thank you.